For a second, it really seemed like things were all gloom and doom in the Western animation scene. And to be fair, it still kinda is. Over half of the industry is still out of work, and we're in reboot hell with a strike on the horizon. But if the last two weeks have been any indication, things are getting better. Because all of these studios and streaming services just previewed and announced a buttload of cartoons. Mystery cartoons, action cartoons, comedy cartoons. Cartoons that just don't stay dead no matter how many times you shoot at them. I'm talking tunes for days. Literally days. This is the third video in a row I've made on all of this news. I miss natural sunlight. We ran through most of the Cartoon Network and Warner Bros. animation projects reviewed at the 2024 Nessie Festival, but that was just scratching the surface. Between Netflix, Disney, Paramount, and Adult Swim, the dry spell animation fans are in seems to be coming to an end. Dare I say, a new era is upon us. Now, I'd like to think I understand the kind of cartoons you guys like to see. So in this video, I will be spotlighting all the upcoming cartoons that caught my eye, categorized by three different sections. Story-driven, aka serialized. Episodic, usually a comedy where you can jump into just about any episode. And adult animation. That's a little bit of both just because it's easier for me to not forget anything if they're all grouped together. And before we get started, I just want to humbly ask y'all to like the video and subscribe to the channel to stay in the loop with the animation scene and all of our other wacky cartoon videos. In return, you'll get a little version of me. I want you to have it. I, I don't really want this. One thing about a silly guy like me, I love my ghost cartoons. They were always my favorite growing up. The cartoon Shane and I have been itching to make is ghost oriented. So I'm very happy to say that the two shows kicking off this video dabble in the supernatural, starting with the Doomies coming soon to Disney+. Plus. And thanks to Alex Reef over at LaughingPlace.com, we have an article that provides an extensive recap of the series' first look at Ansi. In the sleepy coastal town of Whimper, Bobby and his best friend Rami are desperately searching for something strange and unusual to happen. The only problem is that this town may be famous for its legends, but nothing ever actually happens there. Until it does. Bobby and Rami find a magic room that opens a portal to a realm of creatures, including ghosts, monsters, and sorcerers. Each episode will find them facing off against a new foe, but they don't have to fight alone. Joining their adventures is a stoic monster fighter born of a sorcerer's spell named Kim. Plus Doug, the knowledgeable yet lazy lighthouse keeper. As a serialized series, all of the lead characters will demonstrate growth as they tackle each monster in a quest to seal the portal back up and save Whimper. Together, the Doomies will discover their own potential as they try to keep the creatures of Doom where they belong. Now, the Doomies is a product of the animation industry's latest cost-cutting trend. <laughs> It's not being made at TVA, instead being a co-production between Disney Television and Zalam Animation, a French studio. Although I'm not too familiar with their work, judging by their 2023 reel, they're absolutely capable of producing some beautiful animation, utilizing both 2D and CGI. So with some Disney money backing this project, I can only hope that they were given the time and resources to cook and deliver something spectacular. The art direction is already right up my alley, especially with these colors. According to Sirius creator Andres Fernandez. He sought the talents of an artist by the alias of Posla to help design the world of the Doomies. Andres was attracted to Posla's rough sketch style and interesting use of black, which he wanted to translate to the series through character and world design. Fernandez also touched on the importance of color. The world of Whimper uses natural colors, with northern France's typical gloomy, overcast skies. But when Bobby and Rami are dealing with the creatures of Doom, scenes become brighter and more colorful, which also helps to offset what could otherwise be scary moments. But like the films that inspired Andres, scary moments in the Doomies will be equally balanced by comedy and heart. We're probably all thinking it, but this series is definitely giving off some Gravity Falls vibes. It'll be funny, but spooky. Just not to the point where kids are shitting their pants. And like Gravity Falls, The Owl House, or Amphibia, while it'll primarily be a kid show, it's targeting people of all ages. 
They're designing this with co-viewing in mind, as in the parents or older siblings watching alongside kids. And 20-somethings who make video essays and theory content. Wait, what? I'm really excited to swing by the town of Whimper and learn what the deal is with the glyphs on Bobby's arm. This character beefing with the wizard, who I'm assuming is either Kim or Jenny, conveys to me that action may be a component of the show, which I'm always down to see. All in all, the Doomies is definitely something animation fans should be on the lookout for. I just hope its rollout on Disney Plus is actually taken seriously. Like, I get it. Most of your subscribers are there to bitch about the new Star Wars or Marvel project, but it'd still be nice to see this at the front of the homepage carousel. The Doomies is slated to release on Disney Plus globally later this year. And I really hope lore-hungry cartoon fans turn up for it. I cannot stress this enough. If you're like me, and were ever obsessed with cartoons like Avatar, Danny Phantom, American Dragon, Steven Universe, Gravity Falls, The Owl House, anime, specifically Shonen, then you need to watch Gentry Chow vs. The Underworld. This is a show hyped up to me on a near daily basis. Because the show's editor is my homie, the one, the only, Mackenzie Atwood. That's right, the legend who brought us the Pearl Secret Rap Career Saga is now editing the cartoon that's going to dominate the TikTok for you page in the near future. Hope you like this face, because she's about to be half of the icons on cartoon Twitter. Premiering later this year, Gentry Chow vs. The Underworld is a new series from creator Echo Wu. The show follows Gentry Chow, a Chinese-American teen living in a small Texas town, who finds out a demon king is hunting her for the supernatural powers she's been working her whole life to repress. Now, I know we only have the synopsis and a handful of images to go off of, but if this pic of Gentry scrapping with some dead band geeks doesn't speak for itself, then believe me when I say that this show is going to have the sauce. And clearly Netflix sees that too, as despite announcing over 30 new series and features, only Arcane and Gentry got Instagram posts. And Arcane's already huge, so that tells me they really have faith in Gentry being a hit, and want to give people plenty of time to clear their schedules for it. So be sure to tune in when it hits Netflix later this year. Werewolves and Teen Angst, a classic combo that's been kinda dormant for a bit, but Netflix thinks it's time for a comeback, as they're adapting the 2010's young adult Wereworld novels into a CG animated series. What's it about? Glad you asked, because the press releases will give you nothing. Wereworld follows the story of 15-year-old Drew, a shepherd's son as he comes of age and discovers he's the last of the long line of werewolves, and rightful yet reluctant ruler of the land of Lycia, where werelords reign. Before long, he's hurtling headlong to an epic journey of fantasy and horror, from one deadly encounter to the next, meeting exotic werelords at every turn, as he's drawn inexorably towards his destiny. Jellyfish Pictures is behind the animation for the series. They have previously worked on How to Train Your Dragon Homecoming, Spirit Untamed, The Boss Baby, The Bad Guys, and Kung Fu Panda. I think we're going to start seeing a lot more projects like Wolf King in the future, animated series that are just direct adaptations of books and graphic novels. In fact, JG Quintella regular show fame is cooking up one that we'll talk about later. Keep watching. In general, book adaptations are shifting to television as opposed to big Hollywood blockbusters, which I think is a good move as a whole season of television gives you a lot more time to faithfully adapt a series as opposed to a two-hour movie. Studios are already reliant on established IP, and with Invincible blowing up in the mainstream, alongside Nimona being met with high praise after premiering on Netflix last year, it only makes sense that it opened the floodgates for studios to greenlight more adaptations in this medium. It also gives them an ideal time frame for how long these shows will run, since the story is already mapped out for them. There's six books in the Wereworld series, so I imagine if they do two books per season, then it'll run for three seasons. If they do three books per season, then it'll run for two. But don't forget, this is Netflix. They'll probably produce two seasons and split those up regardless. Wolf King looks cool! It's slated for a 2025 release. If you read the books, let us know what we should expect in the comments. So, uh, yeah.
Minecraft is getting an animated series on Netflix, which was announced at the end of their 15-day celebration for their 15th anniversary. We are all getting so old. We're thrilled to announce that we've joined forces with Netflix to produce an animated series set in our blocky universe. The series will tell an original story with new characters and reflect the world of Minecraft in a new light. It is currently in development by the talented studio Wild Brain, creators of Sonic Prime, Ninjago Dragons Rising, and Carmen Sandiego and will debut exclusively on Netflix. We couldn't be more excited, so stay tuned for more information. As they spell out in the press release, this will be taking after adaptations like Fallout or Cyberpunk Edge Runners, in the sense that it will be set in the same universe of the game and pull from its lore and atmosphere, but it's very much its own thing that won't be acknowledged in the game anytime soon. Sounds like we won't be seeing Steve or any of the other characters in the show. I'm also pretty sure this is sort of kind of a replacement for Minecraft Story Mode, which apparently disappeared from Netflix a while back due to licensing rights expiring. The release date is currently unknown, and I can't say I'm itching to watch it as I'm not super into Minecraft. I've only played it a few times. But my friends really love it, so my tune might change by the time this finally rolls out. No release window has been given. This is probably an early development, but I'd assume sometime in 2026. Next up, we have Dragon Strikers. All right, so this is actually a show that was announced two summers ago alongside the Doomies, but it didn't seem to have a huge spotlight at ANSI this year, despite being announced for a 2024 release, which is surprising because judging by this poster alone, this has the potential to really blow up. When the world's most popular sport combines with magic, awesomeness escalates quicker than a dragon-powered strike. In this action-packed adventure full of comedy and high-stakes sports drama, elite players have a magical signature move that they can use on the pitch. 12-year-old Key is a farm boy fanboy who can only dream of entering the famous school where the greatest players train before joining the big leagues, until he discovers he has his own ultra-powerful spell and may even be the legendary Dragon Striker. Key joins a team of hapless underdogs who band together to take on the school champions while fighting to prevent an ancient evil from resurfacing. There's a clear sports anime influence, and the designs, to me, just scream. This show has some beautiful ass animation, so let's hope my suspicions are correct. Disney, you better promote this show when it comes out, because the silence at ANSI was kinda crazy. Hotel Transylvania is getting an animated series titled Motel Transylvania. This feels pretty par for the course. Animated kids film gets television series. We've seen this plenty of times before. Motel Transylvania is open for business as Drac and Mavis take a break from their Transylvanian haunts to set up a brand new resort for humans and monsters in the California desert. Vampires and Sunshine! What can go wrong? A lot, I'm guessing. Now, I'm not up to date on the Hotel Transylvania films, but I'm assuming Gendy might be a little hands-off with this one, as he's occupied with other projects. Still, it'll probably be fine. Not really my thing, but if you enjoy the movies, I hope you have a good time with this in 2025. Also, there's a new Ghostbusters show. Not much info is out on it, so it's not getting its own segment. I'm assuming it's a few years off, but hey, if you ain't afraid of no ghost, keep an eye out for that one. Tales of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. A 12 episode miniseries that continues the mutant mayhem iteration of the boys and their action-packed adventures. Although the Ninja Turtles are best known as an ensemble, it seems like each episode will be focused on a specific turtle going on their own solo adventure. The turtles will be challenged like never before as Leo, Raph, Donnie, and Mikey each go it alone for the first time. Faced with new threats and teaming up with allies old and new, the turtles will discover who they really are when they don't have their brothers at their sides. Although this is another idea IP-centric cartoon, I think this is still pretty nice to see. Ninja Turtles has had a billion incarnations since I was a kid, so it already gets a pass in my eyes, the same way something like Scooby-Doo would. But Mutant Mayhem is such an adrenaline-filled delight that getting more of this specific world has me geeked. The animation feels like it's trying to emulate Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and I'm not complaining, but it doesn't seem like Flying Bark is animating this series. Instead, it's a co-production between Nickelodeon and Point Grey Pictures. But hey, good animation is good animation. Eye-pleasing art direction is eye-pleasing art direction. I'll always have a soft spot for the turtles. And if you haven't watched Mean Mayhem yet, I highly recommend it. It's kind of hard for me to talk about what to expect without spoiling that movie, but it's truly just such a great time that I'd rather not do that in this video. Show drops in August on Paramount+, Plus, so you have plenty of time to check out the movie and get familiar with this version of the turtles. 
Rounding out the family-friendly serialized tunes, we have a little segment I like to call, Oh Yeah! That exist! Touching based on three shows that were announced eons ago and are still coming out within the next year or so. Invincible Fight Girl. Signs are pointing to this heading to Adult Swim. They even featured it with the adult animation at Anetsi. It's all but confirmed at this point. Andy dreams of becoming the greatest pro wrestler of all time. Assuming the wrestler alias Fight Girl, Andy sets out to the bizarre and colorful wrestling world, determined to make a name for herself. Along the way, she meets cynical retired champ Aunt P, the endearing innocent Mikey, a great wrestling analyst in the making, and the unscrupulous Craig, who doesn't so much love wrestling as he does scheming ways to profit it off it. United in the goal of helping Andy achieve wrestling glory, this found family embarks on a journey filled with adversity and self-discovery as they chase their dreams, push past their limits, and most importantly, deliver smackdowns on the toughest wrestlers they can find. I feel like we're gonna get a proper preview of this at San Diego Comic Con, and it'll end up premiering in the fall, potentially on Toonami. We'll see. Yanu, Child of Wonder. In another book adaptation, Yanu must uncover the mystery behind her newfound powers to save her people from an ancient curse threatening to destroy humanity. It got pushed to 2025, but it's still slated to premiere on Cartoon Network, although a pivot to adult film wouldn't surprise anybody at this point. Also, look at this image from the show. The art style took me by surprise. It's a lot closer to something like Avatar than I initially expected. Your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Formerly known as Spider-Man Freshman Year, this long-awaited Spider-Man cartoon started out as a prequel to the Tom Holland films, but it's clear that since then, the team has been given the freedom to do whatever the hell they want. It really seems like Disney is concerned with making a good Spider-Man cartoon first and foremost. Lord knows it's been a while. It's supposed to release on Disney Plus later this year, and after the absolute banger that was X-Men 97. I have a feeling it'll be on the same level of mind-blowing animation and engaging storytelling, even if it doesn't get the chance to shed as much blood as its contemporary. Not that a Spider-Man show needs it. Alright, let's talk about some funnies. This series follows six middle schoolers who are tricked into attending a fake academic summer camp by a mad scientist. Now they're stuck for three months on a wild tropical island with mind-reading manatees, giant fighting fun guy, and fashion-forward mutants. Less academia than they hoped for, but a lot more adventure. This is another show I've heard great things about over the last year and have been eager to peep. The theme song alone is filled with a lot of energy. I can't tell if this chip fella is dancing or hitting a Power Rangers pose, but I can tell he's having a good time doing it. Although I'm not too crazy about the art style, I think these are some pretty fun designs. Is that furry saber spark? Of course, my favorite character design is the antagonist, Dr. Lula. Is she single? <laughs> nice. This island looks crazy. The ship looks like it's either CGI or hyper-realistic, which kind of reminds me of shows like Flapjack, and I'm obsessed with all of these creature designs. You can tell that this show is going to be a trip. I really hope it clicks with the target demographic. Stugel premieres this fall on Disney Channel and Disney+. Plus. I don't want to talk about this one. Phineas and Ferb is back for another summer vacation. Not like they really left in the first place, but whatever. Everyone needs a SpongeBob now. They've been cooking up this revival for a bit now. We've had episode titles and some other details trickle out for a while, but we got some concrete information during Disney's presentation at ANSI. Phineas and Ferb co-creators Dan Poppenmeyer and Jeff Swampy Marsh opened up about their new 40-episode order, sharing that they consider this to be the original show's fifth season. After 222 episodes, five hour-long special and two feature films, Dan and Swampy were worried they'd have a hard time coming up with fresh ideas for the new season. But less than a week into the writer's room, which consists of returning writers and fresh young talent, all concerns dissipated. Dan believes seven of the new episodes are destined to become favorites for the show's most diehard fans. With the goal to make Season 5 of Phineas and Ferb feel as much like the first four seasons as possible, Dan and Swampy revealed one major change they had to make. It's a new summer! Set one year after the previous iteration of the show, Season 5 will kick off with a splashy musical number about the start of a new summer season. So there you have it! Not too surprising that they want to honor the original series finale and set this during a different summer break, but personally, I think it would be very wise to take cues from the recent Beavis and Butthead revival, as that's a show that figured out how to have its cake and eat it too. 
Building off the made-for-streaming movie that ushered in the new era for that show, some episodes follow Beavis and Butthead in high school, business as usual, and some follow the duo in their senior citizen years. And to my surprise, these episodes are just as funny, if not funnier, than the high school episodes. I really think Phineas and Ferb will benefit from the same format. Give us some episodes set in the new summer, but balance it out with episodes set in the future, after the episode Act Your Age. So that way, the kiddos who didn't grow up with the original series get to be exposed to what made the original so great, while returning viewers, either watching with their kids or making video essays and theory content, get to sort of have the characters grow up with them. Plus, I just want to see what kind of hijinks Phoebes and Ferb get up to in college. I want to see them throw a Project X Rager on campus. Come on, Dan and Swampy, give it to me! No release window has been given for the survival, but I'd assume it'd be like, next summer, right? You can't premiere Phineas and Ferb in any other season. Okay, so like, since we already talked about things like Gumball Season 7 and Adventure Time side quests in other videos, the list of episodic shows to talk about is pretty sparse, especially since most of them are renewals. That being said, we're getting Big City Green Season 5, The Proud Family Louder and Prouder Season 3, Don't Let Twitter Know, Kiff Season 3, I guess the Loud House is still going over at Nick, you get the idea. Now let's talk about some adult animation. Arcane Season 2 After a three-year wait, the tragic tale of these two sisters is back for a final season this November. Why is it ending so soon? Well, the three-year wait probably didn't do it any favors, but they made it clear that this isn't a cancellation. They're just interested in telling more stories in the League of Legends mythos. Despite Arcane being as good as it is, League players often claim that they pulled from the least interesting lore in the game, so if they can elevate the source material this much, I definitely want to see what other stories they can pull off. But yeah, get ready to cry your eyes out come November. Speaking of video game adaptations, Tomb Raider's getting a show that they tried passing off as an anime, but no one was having that. Tomb Raider The Legend of Laura Croft picks up after the events of the highly successful Tomb Raider video game Survivor Trilogy and will chart the glob trotting heroine's next chapter as an iconic adventurer. More than 25 years after her first appearance, Laura Croft, voiced by Haley Atwell, continues to explore ancient mysteries and uncover lost truths across breathtaking and dangerous destinations. Whoa! An adaptation that might be canon to the games? This is Uncharted territory! Not to be confused with Uncharted, which has its games and movies in a different continuity. Sorry Tom, you're just not Nathan Drake, bro. You're not him. I've barely played the Tomb Raider games, but the animation looks sick. Look, Laura Croft could beat my ass any day, and I'd thank her! If it's an action cartoon, I'm already willing to check it out, so I look forward to watching this in October. You think if this show is like, an instant success, Laura Croft's gonna become one of the go-to last-minute Halloween costumes for this year? I think so. Sound off in the comments. <laughs> After a long run, far longer than I think anyone anticipated, Big Mouth is finally coming to an end with its eighth and final season, slated to release next year. <laughs> the return of regular show isn't the only thing Gigi Quintel's working on over at Cartoon Network as he's also adapting the comic Super Mutant Magic Academy alongside his creator, Jillian Tamaki. The surreal comedy show focuses on Marsha, a sarcastic transfer student with a mysterious past who ends up at a high school that includes mutants and human students attempting to navigate friendships, relationships, and their burgeoning powers. Despite being produced at Cartoon Network, which is really just a part of Warner Bros. animation now, Super Mutant Magic Academy is actually heading towards Adult Swim. It's already been moved from development to series, so it's about to enter production if they haven't started on it already. Regular show and a comic adaptation? Damn, Quintel is gonna be busy! Of course, Quintel's name is being put first in headlines to catch people's attention, but we should really be celebrating Jillian Tamaki. Getting your comic adapted into a TV show for Adult Swim is huge! Definitely need to check those out before the show arrives. And I'm happy to see Adult Swim continue to branch out beyond the box of stoner comedy that public perception kind of put them in. It seems like they're providing a lot more variety in their animated programming, now that their live action offerings are practically non existent. And with the next day on Max system, it's easier now than ever for these shows to reach the target demographic who don't have cable. There is no release window for Super Mutant Magic Academy yet, but I assume it starts rolling out in either 2026 or 2027. Kinda far, but there'll be plenty of media to keep you entertained until then. Shit, once Sparking Zero drops, I'll never be bored again!
Another series previewed at ANSI is the upcoming Adult Swim show, Common Side Effects. From one of the co-creators of Scavenger's Reign, Joe Bennett. Also, Scavenger's Reign is an amazing animated sci-fi thriller on Max that they canceled after one season. But then Netflix scooped it up and said a season one performs well on their platform, a season two isn't out of the question, so go watch on Netflix. Especially if you live in the US. I don't even know if it's on there internationally. From executive producers Mike Judge and Greg Daniels, Common Side Effects follows Marshall and Francis, two former high school lab partners who share a secret. Marshall has discovered the world's greatest medicine, a mushroom that can heal almost anything. But getting it out into the world won't be easy. The DEA, Big Pharma, and international businessmen are all on the chase to stop them. The half-hour serialized comedic thriller is produced by Bandera and Green Street Pictures. A half-hour serialized thriller on Adult Swim? From one of the homies that helped make Scavengers Reign? And you got Mike Judge's name on there? Bro, sign me up. You can see a little bit of Scavengers Reign in the art style, but the proportions of the characters are a lot more exaggerated compared to Scavengers. Which I dig! Makes it feel a lot more at home on Adult Swim. They screened the entire first episode of Nancy, so it's gotta be coming soon, right? Like, if not this year, early next year. Yeah, let's just roll with that. Another ghost cartoon? Yes, sir. Created for Netflix by Matt Roller, who also worked on Archer and Rick and Morty. The Underveil follows a single mother of two who struggles to run a hotel that happens to be haunted. Luckily, she has some help from her estranged brother, who is now one of the ghosts and thinks his fellow phantoms have some pretty good ideas. Uh-oh. I don't really know what to expect from this one. I think it looks... Fine? We don't have much to go off of from the premise or key visual, and the art style is that bitmoji-ish look a lot of adult animation and even shows like Haley's on it are pivoting to, but a lot of the creatures look pretty sick, so I'm willing to keep an open mind. There's no release window for The Underville yet, but I'd wager 2025 or 2026. Maybe they'll hype it up as their next big adult animated sitcom after Big Mouth Raps. We'll just have to wait and see. Also announced at ANSI, Smiling Friends got renewed for a third season! You hear that? That's the sound of every artist and animator on the internet trying to work on season 3 in some capacity. Smiling Friends is definitely the kind of hit Adult Swim has been fiending for. One that can rival the popularity of Rick and Morty, much to the dismay of people who don't want its fanbase to turn out the same way. Sorry y'all, that's just the nature of talking about a big show online. But between its immense popularity, and the show just being a genuine celebration of animation, especially internet animation, I don't think it's ending anytime soon. Charlie and Pim are going to be making people smile for... How long do Big Adult Swim shows usually last? <laughs> Forever! I don't know how many people have been keeping tabs on the Beavs and Butthead revival, but it's gearing up for a third season. I mainly wanted to mention this because the season is actually going to be premiering on Comedy Central, as opposed to being an exclusive on Paramount+. Plus. Between this and Fairly Odd Parents A New Wish, it seems like Paramount is moving away from putting their shows behind another paywall, which I think is a good move. The streaming wars are finally coming to an end. The biggest casualty? All of our wallets. Unless you're a member of the Straw Hats. Glad Comedy Central finally has another adult animated series that can last for more than two seasons. Hopefully they pair up premieres with South Park down the road, because that would be a killer power hour of television. And hey, while we're talking about Mike Judge shows, don't forget there's a King of the Hill revival on the way. Johnny Two Cellos made a great video covering new details surrounding that project. So I just watched the pilot for this next show while scripting this segment, and honestly, I think I already really like it. Which, judging by the like to dislike ratio, is a controversial statement. Oh my god, yes! A series of extremely relatable circumstances is set in a futuristic Los Angeles where humans and robots coexist and date around with each other, with the pilot focusing on our main character Sunny dealing with her robot boyfriend's emotional unavailability. Hijinks definitely ensue, and this episode ends up in a completely different place from where it started. I really vibe with it. The show is basically a mix of insecure and regular show or early adventure time. I really don't get the hate. Sure, there's some gross out moments, not every joke hits, but I like these characters. Sunny's a damn mess. She's obnoxious for sure, but she's definitely going to be living in my head rent free for a bit. The art direction quickly grew on me, and I want to see where the story goes. Haters be damned, I'm glad this is getting a full series. Let the show find its footing and flesh out these characters. Now I'll keep it a buck. I know people are already predisposed to dunking on new adult animation, but a good chunk of these dislikes, not all, just a good chunk, definitely just saw a black woman and started tweaking. Disagree if you want, but I just saw how people reacted to a black lady with a big brain being added to the boys. Homies are scared of some melanin. If the boondocks came out today, people would be losing their minds. Oh, well, actually, if it came out today, they'd make it work. Granddad, I think I might be. It's okay, son. I know. <laughs> 
When I saw that Joe Kappa's Ha Ha You Clowns would be graduating from Little Adults from Smalls to a full-length series, I was over the moon. My friends and I have gathered around the TV to watch the minisodes a handful of times now, and each time I think I laugh harder than the last. 15-minute episodes will follow three jacked, surprisingly kind-hearted brothers, who are accompanied by their loving and similarly swole father as they engage in a series of misadventures to bond after their mother's passing. For going traditional jokes and punchlines, the serious surreal comedy comes from its premise that a group of deep-voiced, muscle-bound bros are actually sensitive, well-educated, and articulate sweethearts who would do anything for one another. Look, all I gotta say is as soon as this video is over, after you watch, like, another video or two on here, go to Adult Swim's channel and watch all the minisodes. Please, just trust me on this. Don't question why they're the family from an improvement, it's just a part of the vibe. Dad, Mom grabbed Preston's toes and dragged him underwater. Wow, her powers are getting stronger. Closing out this video, I just want to run through the other action cartoons that were announced or acknowledged recently. Twilight of the Gods, Norse mythology, Zack Snyder is involved, he's starting the first and last episodes of the season, will try either be a very good thing or a very bad thing depending on how you feel about his movies. Coming to Netflix this fall, Primal Season 3. It seems like this season really is going to stick with the anthology format, which I'm fine with as I think the first anthology episode, Season 2's The Primal Theory, was one of, if not the greatest animated episode of television in in 2022. I think this is the kind of direction this show should head in, instead of trying to continue a story that already reached a natural conclusion. Though a few episodes here and there with Spear and Mira's kid would be cool. Maybe give us an episode from before Spear's original family kicked the bucket. But honestly, I would prefer if we just stayed away from the OG cast entirely. Their story's over, this world has some crazy shit in it, so let's just get wacky. Creature Commandos. DC show, looks fun, art direction is great, I've heard a lot of great things, and it'll be the first installment in James Gunn's new DC universe starting with a cartoon, because he understands the assignment and knows that this medium can convey a lot of cool shit. I'm pumped. Batman Capes Crusader. Despite the loss of the legendary Kevin Conroy, the show's team is still pushing through, and it's turning out great. Season 1 is 10 episodes and will be dropping on Prime Video August 1st. Between this and X-Men 97, comic book fans who waited literal decades for their childhood to come back are on top right now. Get Jiro! Another comic adaptation heading to Adult Swim, set in the near future, the show centers on a mysterious, revenge-focused sushi chef named Jiro, in a version of Los Angeles where customers resort to murder to secure a table at a coveted restaurant. Like I said earlier in the video, these adaptations seem like a step in the right direction, and I'll check it out. I'm assuming it'll drop like 2026 at the earliest because they had nothing besides it's coming. Last but not least, Genny Tadakovsky isn't just giving us another season of Primal, but he's also rolling out another new card cartoon. Safari Heist, a 10-episode comedic robbery that will have the feel of a musical. The robbers are three brother frogs, Control Freak James, Neurotic Isaac, and Little George, who thinks he's brilliant but is actually totally not. Estranged, they meet up at their father's funeral, where they are informed that they will only inherit his fortune if they pull off a bank heist, stealing the contents of a bank's vault numbered 88. Trouble comes when all three cut side deals for help in the form of a Japanese Yakuza tiger, a Russian mafia hippo, and an Italian gorilla mobster. The police are wildebeest. I mean, sure, that's not exactly an action show, but with elements like Heist and the Yakuza and the mobsters and the Mafia, action has to be a component of this show. Even if it makes you giggle, this is Gendy we're talking about. And although Unicorn was kinda mid, very mid, I'm sorry Gendy, I'll give this show a shot. And this is another one I expect to see around 2025 or 2026. But with all that said, these are just some of the cartoons headed our way over the next few years with more in the pipeline. Hell, there's plenty we probably have no idea even exists yet. So let us know what shows you're hyped for in the comments down below, and keep the conversation going over on Twitter and Instagram at AltraVox and at RoundTableVids. And if you enjoyed this video, please order a like and subscribe to the Roundtable for more great cartoon content. Thank you for watching, and I hope you're making the most out of your summer. Peace!